Minister Bushati explained that the government's support for former MP Mylinda Briggs' candidacy for Secretary General in the Regional Cooperation Council is simply a prudence of institutions and not a political bargain. The debate on gender equality only gets stronger this March 8th as it is International Women's Day. Despite 2017 being characterised by a movement for female empowerment, it seems not many things have changed. Arian Valiai continued his action of planting trees, this time with the female employees of the municipality, with the mayor appealing to men to act as gentlemen towards women. Good evening, it's six o'clock on Thursday the 8th of March 2018. Happy International Women's Day and welcome to the English edition of Aura News. My name is Alexandra, bringing you the day's top stories from across the country translated into English. Women and girls who have played an important role in Albanian diplomacy have joined the Ministry of Europe and Foreign Affairs for Women's Day this March 8th. Present at the activity, former MP Mylinda Bregu did not hesitate to unveil her platform as a candidate for the Secretary General of the Regional Co Cooperation Council and to seek the support of foreign diplomats. I do not believe that Minister Bushati has called me just as a representative of the opposition, where I continue to be, but also for the position I applied for. For the first time, I see an effort not only from the Albanian state, but from all Albanians, to support not only a woman who is running for an important position, but to give her what she deserves, said Mylinda Bregu. Foreign Minister Didmir Bushati sees Bregu's candidacy for Secretary General of the Regional Cooperation Council as a big achievement for an Albanian woman and the prudence of state institutions. Support for Brego is not a political bargain. There is no expansion of the coalition, but there is a maturity on the part of the Albanian society to support a career woman, said Didmir Bushati. For the Dutch ambassador, more attention is needed for women given the situation that one in three suffer from being violated. Meanwhile, women and girls march from Skanderberg Square towards the presidency to protest for their rights. The Alliance for Labour Laws called on employers and institutions to avoid job abuses. After a full year of women in Hollywood, politics, media and, well, everywhere else, speaking out about abuses, gender equality remains a very distant vision even in democratic Western societies. For women in developing countries, the fight against persecution based solely on gender is especially challenging. In countries affected by war, women are subject to systematic sexual violence, a particular severe situation in rural areas. Even when it comes to livelihood and insurances, women are widely discriminated against. Globally, men bring home 75% higher wages than women, while the value given to the unpaid work performed by women every year around the globe amounts to $10 trillion, twice the accrued level for men. The female voice occupied a significant space in the world cinema. The three biggest paid movies in 2017 had women as key characters for the first time in almost 60 years. However, women account for only 18% of directors, screenwriters, producers and editors in the top 250 movies of the year. Other interesting statistics about the sad gender reality is that most of the world's illiterate population consists of women at 64%. Meanwhile, only 23% of politicians around the world are women. About 830 women die each day from preventable causes related to pregnancy and maternity. The high volume of music in residential areas or tourist areas is often raised as a major concern for families and tourists. For this reason, all bars and clubs will go through a process of monitoring and measurement of their noise pollution. The Minister of Tourism and Environment, Blendy Clausey, has asked the heads of the local governments and inspectors to, report, to provide a full report regarding noise pollution, focusing on the following five points. Identifying activities, locations and the number of people exposed to noise. Assessing the specific conditions in their licensing and environmental noise management. Assessing areas that should be kept quiet, such as schools, kindergartens, nurseries, hospitals and so on. Setting up a structure for monitoring and controlling noise in the environment. And finally, a concrete plan that meets the required deadlines. The Minister's instruction also states that timetables and noise norms should be in line with established standards. Further measures will also be taken regarding noise generated by transport in residential areas with a focus not on fines but on the establishment of noise barriers.
The former owner of the private university, Cristal, has been released from detention where he spent the last four days. Tirana's court decided to accept the prosecution's request to place Ahmed Mucha under house arrest after he has been charged with the criminal offences of passive corruption in the private sector and falsification of documents. Earlier, lawyer Theodori Solaku had requested the lighter measure of this punishment for his 70-year-old client because of his age, as well as the fact that he does not pose a risk for the destruction of evidence. Mucha will stay in house arrest until the investigation is over. The arrest came as a result of an undercover police investigation where he provided a degree for 2,500 euros. The university dean and chancellor's signatures were scanned while the student identification numbers were set in wet ink, which is an indication that it may have been falsified. Police sources told Aura News that Mucha has issued at least 17 such degrees, while the Ministry of Education reacted by saying that since its closure in 2014, Cristal University has issued 86 fake diplomas. Culture Minister Morella Cumbaro said that there is a political will to build a new theatre on the existing theatre's territory. While present at the Aura News studio, she was asked if a private-public partnership formula would be chosen for this object. Minister Cumbaro underlined that all possibilities will be considered, but that the theatre will be built in the same place as it is, as it is today. We have the political will to build a new national theatre on the same ground where the national theatre is today, said Morella Cumbaro. In the meantime, the Parliament has already started discussing the new culture law, for which the Minister states that the political games will, with votes in the Assembly are not important, instead focusing on what will be offered. Asked about the allegations the DPMP Albana Vokshi made at the Aura News studio, stating that the Ministry has not clearly defined its priorities, Kumbaro says this is due to the lack of inventory over the years. In the news studio, Minister Kumbaro also spoke about the situation created at the castle of Jirakastra, pointing out that wall cracks were also recorded before 1990. But according to her, there has been no concrete intervention project so far. After registering a new crack, Kumbaro said that a working group has been set up for the realisation of a full project. There will also be intervention to reconstruct the bridges collapsed by rainfall. The Mayor of Tirana, Arion Veliai, provided women a day of free travel on public transport in congratulations for International Women's Day. He also made an appeal to men and boys to act gentlemanly as possible towards women. We need to understand that mothers and daughters make the biggest sacrifices and perform the hardest work, from keeping the house to the work of the city. I am glad that we are able to provide a small symbolic gesture by making public transport free for them today. It is a small gesture of gratitude for the sacrifice and contribution that women and girls give to the success of the city of Tirana, said Arion Veliai. Together with the female members of the city council, heads of administrative units, many of the leaders of civil organisations, as well as a group of mothers and autistic children, joined the initiative to plant trees. I am very happy that, together with the fantastic ladies of the city council, our lady administrators and many lady activists in the city of Tirana, we have planted trees on this path, which for many people is still a secret. It's a site we opened in the southern part of the lake and a territory that was released from illegal construction. And today it will be known as the path of mothers and ladies in the city of Tirana, said Arion Veliai. Tirana's mayor stated that the city is at the forefront of emancipation and representation in public life regarding women. Some things are better than, than they were when we, talk, when we talk about gender equality. However, we still have a few things to fix. We still have to fight for payment to be equal for men and women to perform the same job. We still have to fight more for, for more participation. The fact that Tirana is a story of success does not mean that all Albania and all municipalities apply the same quotas and the same commitment. Therefore, I am glad that today Tirana is the first in emancipation, but I still believe that the best is ahead, said, the, said Arion Viliai. The mayor expressed his conviction that after the upcoming elections, the city council will be dominated by women and girls. And that's the news across the country today. Thank you for watching our English edition this evening and be sure to join me again Monday to Saturday at 6pm for the latest news from Albania. Once again, on behalf of Aura News, thank you and good night.